Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, CX Connect, brought to you by Speech Tech, CRM, and Smart Customer Service, um, and by our diamond sponsor, Customer. I'm Bob Fernicke, and I'm the publisher of CRM Magazine, and I'll be the moderator for the broadcasts today. Uh, this is uh, our first virtual conference, although we've been doing webcasts uh, since 1997, so we've got a lot of experience uh, doing online uh, events, and um, we are going to watch a video right now, and then I will come back and introduce our session and our speakers. We've all had challenging support experiences over the years, and as the world's going more digital, as we're doing more online retail, it's only going to continue. Customers have advanced what they expect from the companies that they do business with. They want things immediately, they want to be understood, they want to be known right away, and they want quick resolution to their problems. I think the problem with customer service today is that customers have a higher level of expectations in terms of how they communicate with brands. And the software that brands are using aren't up to those expectations. We say here at Customer that we want our software to enable every business to see a complete picture about their customers. For us, it's about allowing companies to engage with their customers in any way that their customers want to talk to them across any channels. Customer puts all of the relevant information on a single screen so that the agent right away can identify who that customer is and not only what their specific issue is, but all of the issues that that customer may have ever had with the company. One of the biggest challenges that we are solving and solving very well is coupling data with support. Rather than all those that, that litany of questions that people typically ask you, we have all those answers and we know why you're calling or, or, or emailing or chatting. And we're able to get you that response instantaneously and that is the thing that customers and companies enjoy the most about our product today. Our software enables support people or any person that is solving some sort of customer problem or issue to be able to do that in a digital environment. And that's really why software like ours is going to be important for the next generation of, of online businesses. Okay, great. That was a, a great introduction to customer. Um, our presentation today is titled, What's Next in CX? Insights from Research on Modern Customer Expectations. Really looking forward to this presentation. Uh, I just want to do a little, cute, um, a little um, housekeeping right now. This is a live event, so if you have any questions for either uh, Gabe or Andrea, please type them into the question and answer box. We also have a chat that you can use to chat with us or with uh, fellow attendees, but if you can put your questions in the Q&A box, that would be great so we can find them at the end of the event. Um, we will also, um, uh, we're also recording this. Don't worry, you'll get an email with a link to the archive once the event is posted. And just for sticking around to the Q&A portion of the event, you could win a $50 Amazon gift card uh, if you're present at the end of the event. So now to introduce our speakers for today, we've got Abe Larson. He is the VP of Marketing at Customer and Andrea Paul, Director of Research at Customer. All right, guys, take it away. Ray, Bob, really appreciate it. Excited to be on. Um, excited to be a sponsor of this great event. Um, as Bob mentioned, I'm Gabe Larson. I run growth over here at Customer, and you saw just a little bit about us. And then I've got my colleague, Andrea. Andrea, maybe just take one second and give just a little more about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Andrea Paul. I am the director of research here at Customer. Um, so creating a lot of good content based on actual data that we collect. We regularly go out and survey both CX professionals and consumers, and we love to share those findings with um, folks that that would it would be beneficial towards. So hopefully you guys will get some valuable insights around changing consumer expectations today yes. and what's next in CX. Yeah, I love the research-based approach. We're going to dive into it, but we do want this to be as interactive as possible. So I need to make sure everybody knows how to use their chat. If you can, go open your chat real quick and just tell me your name and where you're from. I'm going to do it right here just so you can see a great example. Gabe Larson, I'm actually originally from Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, but as we get going today, 
would love to have some participation in that chapter. Oh, there we go. We got Andrew. Oh, you're Andrew. <laughs> we, got <laughs> Taylor, we got Brittany, Steve, Mike. Oh, Denise, Omaha. I lived in Omaha. I like that place. Um, Denise, Frisco, Texas. There we go. Good. All righty. Andrea, let's get rocking and rolling. So before we jump into kind of this interactive session, tell us just a little bit about this research that we did and what we'll be talking about today. Yeah, Gabe, do you want to share your screen really quickly so we can walk walk through those slides? Absolutely, <laughs> cupping your way now. There you go. Cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, just to frame up why we did this re research, obviously doing business over the last 15 months has been a whole different ball game. I think that goes without saying, but what may have been standard just maybe 10 years ago really no longer holds true. Um, just how quickly things have shifted in the last year, I think um, we all have felt quite significantly. So, you know, like big box retailers, they were forced to become direct to consumer brands pretty much overnight. Um, many businesses closed their storefronts. They focused on online operations. There's whole different business models like subscription services, personalized products, um, flexible marketplaces that are now really sought after by modern consumers. And, you know, in my opinion, most importantly, it feels as though customers no longer really see relationships with businesses as purely transactional. They see brands as sort of like an extension of their identity. So um, that's why delivering exceptional customer experiences and, and building these relationships with consumers is really imperative for business success in 2021. Um, so we wanted to gut check those feelings and those, those ideas that we have been seeing. Um, and we went out and, uh, surveyed over 500 consumers, um, us based consumers that have shopped online and contacted customer service in the past year. Um, we really wanted to see how those expectations have changed over the past 18 months and sort of the business impact of customer service and customer experience. And we actually did um, consumer research about 18 months ago. So we compared the findings from now to this research that we did in 2019, just to see truly how things are, are moving and shifting. Awesome. Awesome. Great overview. Um, so let's dive in. And again, we're going to ask a little bit for your participation because want to see just like Andrea said, um, what your gut, what our gut said about some of these findings versus what the data actually said. Um, so let's go through it. I'm going to, again, ask for a little participation here. Um, in the chat, I want you to answer this question. You can just put A, B, or C. Um, what percentage of consumers would not shop with the business again after a bad customer experience. So go ahead and throw that in there. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, looks like Adam's got B, Karen's B, Michael's A, um, uh, Denise A, um, Julia's guessing B. Um, I'm going to go with B on this one, Andrea. Um, tell us what it is and, and why. Uh-oh. That, yeah. that was A. It was A. Oh, shoot. I missed it was that. A. Um, yeah, so... This is a very high number, um, which wow. I was a little bit surprised by. So a whopping 90% of consumers said that they wouldn't shop with a business again if they provided um, bad customer service. So in 2019, when we did that, uh, did this survey, it was 78%. So, you know, I think this is a really great stat to start with because it just shows the importance of customer service and how that is growing year after year. So, you know, if it has grown by, you know, 12 percentage points um, in the past 18 months, it means that consumers are more willing than ever to sort of switch brands, but good customer service could be a true differentiator for a business. So, you know, we often hear about boycotts of brands due to certain policies or lack of social responsibility or controversial decisions or what have you, but these like silent boycotts, so to speak, yeah. of yeah. individual consumers who've had poor experiences with a business, um, they can add up really, really quickly and sort of threaten a bit business's bottom line. So I thought this was a good sort of um, a good stat to start with. Yeah. 
do you feel like a couple of questions came in, one from Adam, one from Tim on this, just, do you feel like this is different by, um, or in the data, do you see different by things like age, for example, or industry, uh, yeah. any kind of double click? Do you feel like this is pretty over the, over the general population we're talking about? Yeah, we will dive into the demographic data a little bit towards the end of this, but um, it nice. definitely does differ um, by age group. So strangely enough, um, the younger consumers um, were less likely to uh, abandon a brand all, altogether. Um, the heads of households, aka the folks that sort of hold the purse strings modern day currently, um, were the ones that were most likely to switch. So there are some there are some differences there. Got it. Got it. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, next one. Let's go in. Um, looking for your participation on this one as well. I better think through my own answer. What percentage of consumers plan on shopping online more often post pandemic? Okay. What percentage of consumers yeah, so plan on shopping? This is essentially like. I mean, obviously we all were forced to switch to digital for shopping in the last year yeah. or maybe shop yeah. online more frequently. Um, how many of those folks that, that did that plan to continue to shop online more often once everything was back to normal? Yeah. Got it. So um, uh, let's see. We got Julia. I think a lot of people still prefer the convenience of shopping online. B. Uh, Scott's a B, Mark C, um, Denise A, Bob went with an A, but with a question mark. I don't know what that means, Bob. Um, I think most people are going with A, Marina's B. Um, yeah, I don't think it's C. Um, I'm going to go with B. All right, Andrea. Survey says? Survey says B. You were right, Gabe. You got this one right. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, so of those who reported uh, that they – increase their online shopping in the last year, 85% said that they continue, they plan on continuing to shop more often mm -hmm. in the future once the pandemic is over. Um, so, you know, on the one hand, I think this opens up a massive opportunity for online businesses. Um, however, they really must be prepared to yeah. deliver an exceptional online experience to match the one that they might already be comfortable with in store. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, with an increase in online shopping also always comes an increase in online inquiries um, for customer service. So brands really just have to think through that. Yeah, this is another one that'd be interesting with demographics. I mean, I'm thinking mm -hmm. of my own, <laughs> not to be weird, but my own mother, you know, and um, someone who just took on the digital age full bore yeah. as the pandemic happened, you know, ordering food online for the first time, you know, really getting into just eliminating a lot of that retail experience and that, that changing dynamic for someone like that. I assume she's not alone. And now that she had the hang of it, uh, yeah, that's probably about right. I think she may be one of those that actually sticks around. Yeah. Um, so talk to us a little bit about this shift that you saw. Yeah. Um, so this, this is just data sort of diving more deeply into how the landscape has shifted even further in this past year or so. While you know this top stat says more people on, uh, are shopping online than ever before, um, customer service teams in the past 15 months really were overwhelmed. And these subsequent stats sort of speak to them not quite delivering on consumer expectations to the fullest extent. So um, we did some COVID research like way back in May of 2020 as well. And this just came out like the, the efficiency needs that were um, there were a lot of CX organizations struggling with, but as you can see in the second stat, 82% of consumers have had a bad customer service experience with at least two businesses in the last year. Um, and 93% of those consumers think that contacting customer service should be more convenient. This is up from, I believe, 78% in 2019 when we asked that question. So it seems as though consumers think that co contacting customer service is getting less convenient versus more convenient. Um, and it's sort of moving in the wrong, wrong direction, wrong direction. And I think that, you know, the pandemic did cause this uptick in inquiries. Like I said, even if businesses sales were down, they were getting more questions than ever before they couldn't, you know, businesses didn't have a lot of their stores open. So there were customers that needed their questions answer that they may have done traditionally, you know, in person or going into a business to ask something. 
Um, there were a lot of more hiccups with shipping and fulfillment in the last year. So because of this, this last stat, you can see 42% of consumers think that their time is not valued by businesses. Um, when we look at that by demographics for those 65 plus, um, that number actually grows to 52%. So that makes sense to me because these indiv individuals may not have shopped online previously like your mom and needed yeah, more yeah. assistance than younger yeah. consumers. So that led to, you know, inevitable frustration or longer wait times. Um, so on average, we did see that most consumers get annoyed after waiting um, just four minutes for a response from customer service. So, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's a pretty small amount of time. And over the last year, wait times did increase significantly. Um, and 64% of respondents said that they would never do business with a company again if they abandoned a customer service conversation before being helped. So that means, you know, they were on wait on, on hold for too long, or they sent in an email or a chat and they just gave up altogether. Um, and I think that that's quite telling and it's very yeah. imperative then for customer service uh, organizations to sort of improve their efficiency without impacting effectiveness, which oftentimes is easier said than done. <laughs> Always easier said than done. Uh, we actually said two people ride in on this. Um, Karen, I won't say your last name, Karen, because I don't know if I could say it, but you got Karen and Tim both kind of highlighted that 71% in different ways. Mm -hmm. Karen says, interesting, only 71%. Um, and I actually have an answer to that. Um, okay, so we looked at yeah, that. Uh oh, piling on actually. We looked at <laughs> that ahead, by demographic, ahead. and the reason why is because these Gen Zers, those under the age of twenty-five, there was only, I believe, about twenty percent that said that they shopped more often online, and I think that's probably because they already were shopping online. They were doing almost all of their shopping digitally before the pandemic. So that demographic skewed that number lower. But at the same time, they also said that more than any other demographic that they will continue to shop online more often post pandemic. So ooh, it just skews ooh, the number a little bit. Ooh, yeah. We thought we were gonna pull a fast one by you, Andrew, but I can't. <laughs> I know my I data. <laughs> I think she, uh, Karen just wrote, yeah, I think that makes sense. Awesome. Um, all right, let's continue. Um, easier one here is true and false. That means you guaranteed a 50% chance of getting this right. True or false? Uh, most consumers, you can just put T or F or true or false here in the comments. Most consumers reach out to customer service post-transaction. Most consumers reach out to customer service. So I buy, I buy something here, Andrea, and the typical person reaches out um, more yeah, often. Yeah, something's than not. wrong with my order. I need to make a return. Yeah. I need to change my flight. Things like that. Like uh, All right, let's see what the, uh, the audience says here. Denise, Tom, or false. Drew, false. Drew, um, good old Drew Chamberlain, man. I hope you're doing all right. Uh, Marina, false. Um, Annabelle, true, false. Conf oh, Michael says confidently false. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to go true. I think true on this one. Let's see what the survey. Dang it, false. Um, yeah. Customer service. This was actually one of, one of the biggest differences that we saw Um during the past year, um, you know, that traditional post-transaction problem solver is no longer the primary role of a customer service agent. So um, we saw consumers, you know, just anecdotally um, doing this, but our, our data supported that. So it was really split quite evenly across the buyer journey. 24% said that they contact often during the transaction process when they're trying to make a transaction. 23% said that they contact often after making a purchase. And then 22% said that they contact often even before making a purchase. So it really just means that the role of the customer service agent is changing quite significantly. You know, 48% of the consumers that we service uh, that we surveyed said that um, they expect customer service agents to provide consultative support before buying a product online. And 47% said that they expect customer service agents to know about and recommend products to them. So 
Um, that's just a whole other skill set that uh, agents may not necessarily be used to, um, and they will need the tools and the technology in order to have that information at their fingertips. Um, and it becomes even more interesting when you separate that by demographic, like we were talking about before. So 64% of consumers under 55 expected customer service agents to take on the role of a quote unquote product expert. Um, answering questions, suggesting alternatives, things of that nature. Um, but those over 55, only 37% of them expected that. So I think it just, you know, shows how things, how the trajectory is shifting in terms of, of consultative support. Yeah. Do you, the, the thing that jumped out the most to me is, um, the pre, you know, that, you know, these, these, it wasn't like a, always a post transaction, but now as we investigate, you know, we were getting good information sometimes, but yeah, now we're actually engaging with agents. Therefore it's, it's not like customer service. It's like, do you point product knowledge? Do you see that trend yep. continuing to move there? Yeah. Um, and when we look at just like consumers under the age of 25, it's even more prominent. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, you just need to ensure that your agents have all the information at their fingertips or, you know, routing a conversation appropriately. So someone that might be an expert in a particular product or that might, you know, be trained up in a certain way, um, intelligently routing those instead of manually doing so to get questions answered thoroughly, but also quickly. Um, so I think it'll, it'll only continue in that direction for sure. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Um, yeah, that may, it comes the whole buyer journey basically, as you're kind of alluded to here. Um, yep. um, so talk about how this kind of relates to that, to, to that. Topic. Yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, businesses just need to prepare for this shift a little bit. So 82% of consumers, as you can see here, report that they expect to be treated the same by online and in-person customer service. So, um, they may see these sort of like one-on-one -on -one consultative conversations as necessary in an online environment. Um, on top of this, 89% of consumers um, expect businesses to proactively reach out to them if there's a problem. So that number, I believe in 2019 was 82%. So that's only also grown. So being reactive with customer service no longer really satisfies the consumer. So when you think about, you know, and especially like during the, the pandemic, this just was constantly the fulfillment question, the, the increase in inquiries because there was uh, logistical issues. If there's a storm that's like delaying a shipment or a sizing issue with a product or something that's mislabeled, um, proactive outreach now is not just like a nice benefit. It's actually expected by consumers and and modern consumers sort of see doing business with a company as a, a mutual relationship. So if they're spending money with you, they expect you to care about their business as well. And um, I believe 83% said that they believe they should be treated better for being a loyal customer. That's up from 73% in 2019. So that's a 10% um, increase. And, you know, I think that just speaks to it, it. The same thing I was talking about before in terms of routing conversations, maybe it's intelligently routing VIP customers who have been loyal for a long time or, you know, crossed a threshold of spending with your business um, to ensure that they are getting like the quickest and also the most thorough service that, that you can offer. So um, to create these sort of meaningful relationships, I think that companies really do need to adopt technology tools that allow them to do that, not only that, but also see the full customer history, know all of the issues they've encountered, understand their behavior in context, in context, um, you know, whether that's transactions, returns, uh, conversations in the past, whatever platform they're using, whatever channel they're contacting you on. So I think it's, it's just going to be hugely important. Got it. Got it. Um, okay. Um, let's continue. Um, couple more. I know some of you are loving this. Couple more. What percentage of consumers would recommend a business to a friend after good customer service? Feel free to throw your answer in the chat there. 
Um, what percentage of customers, consumers would recommend business to a friend after good customer service? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the A. I think this is, um, I think, well, I don't know if people would actually do it. I'm going to go with A though. Uh, Bob's an A. Ooh, we got one C. Katie's going for a C in here. Drew, Drew's been pretty right so far. A, Michelle B, uh, Karen A. So I think mostly A's here. Survey says it is A. A. It is A. Um, yeah, I think, you know, customer service, and this is sort of a, has been the case for a long time. However, I think it's only getting more important, but it can be the difference between, you know, a lifelong customer and one that's lost to the competition or conversely, it could be a resounding endorsement for you or like a complete PR nightmare. So mm -hmm. this is the good news. 93% of consumers would recommend a business to a friend um, after a good customer service experience. So it sort of can act as like free marketing for a business in a lot of ways, but not always the case if things go go wrong. If you want to go to the next slide, Gabe. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like this is the opposite, right? Yeah. So this is speaking to the opposite of that. And we already, you know, we kicked off this, um, this webinar with that 90% stat of how easily uh, consumers are willing to, to just abandon a business altogether if they have a bad experience. But um, on top of that, 67% of consumers would abandon their purchase um, if they had a poor experience. So this speaks to that sort of full funnel support. If they tried to contact customer service before making a transaction or during the transaction process and they had a bad interaction, they would just completely abandon it and not go through with their purchase. So it's not only imperative to provide fast and convenient service af after a transaction anymore, it's also before a purchase is even made, ensuring that you aren't missing out on that valuable business. Um, and I think this second stat speaks to a real conundrum, which is knowing when you're letting your customers down, because only 51% of consumers reported actually complaining directly to the retailer after they've had a bad experience, um, meaning that nearly half of unhappy customers may completely go unnoticed. Um, without the proper measurement or, or reporting in place. So, you know, unfortunately damage to business doesn't simply stop with the individual consumer either. Um, I believe 27% of consumers said that they either post on social media or they post an online review if they have a bad customer service experience. And they also typically tell two friends or family mem members at least um, when something goes wrong. So these negative experiences can, you know, spread like wildfire, which is not, not what business is like. That's right. I mean, it seems like they're always more willing to post negative stuff than they are positive stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> when it comes to online interactions. All right. Another true and false for you. Um, make it a little bit simpler. F um, phone is still the most popular support channel. Ooh. Um, true or false. Phone is still the most popular support channel. I got to go with, I don't think, I don't know if phone will ever die. I have to go with true, I think, on this one. Um, let's see what the audience said. Oh, we're pretty split. Yeah, um, pretty much 50-50. Yeah, I thought more people would just go with false. Scott says false unless unless using it as a computer. <laughs> yeah, <no bad. laughs> Mark false. Adam false. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah. I, this one is a little more split than I thought. I thought most people go false, but I just, I struggle with this one. We always talk about the phone is dead. The phone is dead. It's going to be dead, but it never dies. <laughs> it never <laughs> dies to die. Oh, it is true. Um, true. But there's a but. There's a but. There is a but. So, you know, everyone's been asking about demographic data and uh, it does become more complex when you break it down. By demographic. So if you want to go to the next slide, we can dive into that a little further. So phone is the most popular still? Oh, yeah, so when you look at all consumers across the board, it's still number one. But as yeah. you can see on the right here, it shifts a little bit. So um, oh, younger cool. generations continue to sort of veer away from phone as the top method of communication um, towards these digital first channels like email, text, live chat. Um, 
An interesting thing here that we found was that the older generation also said that they preferred live chat, not as their primary, but as a secondary oh, method wow. of communication, which seemed like a slight outlier, but um, it sort of makes sense when you think about uh, the experience for like new online shoppers, because, uh -huh. you know, an individual maybe is trying to buy something online. They have a question about the product. Instead of trying yeah. to track down a phone number, there's a chat widget right on the page where they're trying to make that transaction. So it allows their answer, their questions to be answered quite simply. Um, it meets customers where they are and it makes that lack of technical knowledge maybe less problematic for first time online shoppers. So um, yeah, I think that was an interesting anecdote as well. Um, if you look on the left here, you can see sort of how respondents ranked these different channels. Chatbots, as you can see, is the bottom preferred uh, method of communication. 46%, uh, I believe, of consumers said that they think chatbots are helpful for support. But that number grows hugely when you look at uh, younger consumers. So when you look at that Gen Z sort of uh, demographic under the age of 25, almost 80% of them said that they think chatbots are helpful. So as younger generations begin to age, it'll be necessary to, you know, invest more heavily in self-service tools like chatbots. Um, you know, this demographic has sort of grown up with Google in their back pocket since they yep. were like 12. So they're used <laughs> to finding answers on their own. They don't necessarily want to talk to a real person. They have this like help yourself mentality. So that transfers pretty seamlessly to customer service. Um, but being available on, you know, a plethora of platforms is now sort of like table stakes. I think that 87% of consumers said that they get frustrated when they can't contact customer service on their preferred channel. Um, so the real differentiator for businesses is not necessarily being available on these channels. It's providing that seamless experience where all the channels are tied together. Um, 85% of shoppers said that they get frustrated when they have to switch channels in order to get um, their questions answered or leave the platform that they're currently using. Um, and 84% said they get frustrated when they have to repeat information to customer service. So you really need to find technology that's able to integrate all of the combination of communication channels in order to, you know, capture that free flowing conversation, um, display all of that history and that data in a single screen. So it's like that unified home, so to speak, for um, all of your channels. And it could be transactions, returns, services, bought, um, co past conversations, not just customer service. So um, it just ensures that customers can have the freedom to move across channels as they see fit, as is convenient for them. Um, agent collision is avoided in, in that scenario as well, because you sort of have this integrated view of um, everything that's happened. So there's not multiple agents working the same ticket as at once. Um, so it can really provide a consistent experience for customers at, at just about every touch point. Do you, Andrea, a um, couple of questions came in around social media. Do you see the social yep. media piece really honing in on Facebook or Twitter or how is social media kind of playing a role here? Yeah, I think that social is growing really significantly. Um, we actually did research on that sort of towards the end of 2020. Um, and it is demographic specific as well. Younger demographics that spend more time on social media are using it more heavily. But when you think about social, it's no longer necessarily a social platform. Like a lot of folks are using it to buy now. Like you think of that the new Instagram interface, you have the shop button right in the middle. So it's sort of turning into a one-stop shop. It's like social messaging is similar to live chat. If you're trying to buy something on, on a website, you have live chat right there where you can get your questions answered. And on social, you have social messaging. You can message a brand. You can message an influencer that's posted something and get your questions answered directly there. So um, it's just a, a, a separate channel with... Uh, similar sort of buyer journey. 
No, I love that. I think that's um, that's the way people often are going. So much going on in social commerce. I think that's a fun conversation to have. All right, really good. Some good feedback on on that one. Thanks for your comments. Um, so we're talking about generational differences. We've been hinting at this for you know the entire webinar at this point, but knowing who your business is servicing and how they prefer to communicate with customer service is really imperative for success. Um, but knowing sort of what younger generations prefer gives organizations insight into what's on the horizon when it comes to CX trends, what may have been the norm, you know, 15 years ago could still be preferred by older generations, whereas younger consumers are now setting the bar for the customer experience of the future. So um, if you look on the left here across the board, the age group with the highest expectations when it comes to customer service are within that typical range of heads of household, right? So the 34 to 54 year olds, they report the most decisive and sort of harshest consequences when it comes to poor customer service. So that means that, you know, they're willing to switch brands more easily. They're willing to boycott brands more easily. And today they're the ones that sort of hold those purse strings as we were discussing before. So um, it's really important to ensure that you're meeting their expectations. However, curiously, 75% of that same demographic also reported that they think their time is valued and respected by customer service organizations. So the average across the board is 52% for that, which means that Perhaps while these individuals have high expectations and severe consequences when they aren't met, um, they have them because they've historically had positive interactions with customer service. Instead of seeing these stats as you know, necessarily threatening, they can instead be seen as sort of a positive sign that consumers expect a lot because they've been given a lot. Um, so we've already sort of discussed that the younger generation prefers digital first methods. They have a higher appetite for chatbots and self-service than older generations, but they also seem to have lower expectations than all other generations as well. Um, only 15% of those that are considered Gen Z said that they agree with the statement that the customer is always right. So on average across the board, it was closer to 50%, I believe it was like around 43%. Um, so that's a sort of a signal to me that this age old saying of the customer is always right is sort of falling out of style. And perhaps the younger generation is coming to the table with a bit more empathy than other generations. Um, additionally, only 62% of those 24 and under think that they should be treated better for being a loyal customer. On average, it's 83%. So that's significantly lower and only 31% would abandon a purchase due to a bad customer a customer experience compared to an average of, of 67. So, you know, we touched on this previously, but they're a bit more forgiving when it comes to customer service hiccups. However, they also um, are less willing to communicate with brands. So they have lower expectations, but they also don't reach out to brands when something goes wrong. So um, the majority of older demographics all reported that they would reach out to a business after a bad customer service experience. However, the majority of consumers under the age of 25 reported that they don't take any action at all when something goes wrong. So that means that a negative experience with sort of these future heads of household um, might easily fall under the radar for brands today. And these negative brand associations could sort of build up over time. Um, it's really, really important to measure customer satisfaction and get ahead of problems before it's too late. Um, but the good news is, is that 77% of consumers under 25 said that they're willing to spend more money for good customer service. And on average, that's only 62%. So that means that while younger consumers may be more forgiving when it comes to customer service, they still really value it highly. Um, and there's a huge opportunity for organizations to leverage customer service as a differentiator. Um, so, you know, I think that it's just quite interesting to look at the full demographic spread and how things are shifting in the future. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and 
share my screen again if I can bring up this deck. So the essential conclusion of this is like, how on earth can you potentially even think about um, delivering on these insanely high consumer expectations? Um, the first thing that I would recommend is essentially taking advantage of technology as much as humanly possible. So um, a, I believe a Forrester report said that consumer or agents spend about 50% of their time on tracking down information and doing very tactical menial tasks. So the more that you can tap into automation, into the power of AI to eliminate these menial repetitive tasks, whether that's manually routing conversations, tagging conversations, gathering information, things of that nature, um, you'll free up a lot more of agents' time in order to build these relationships, solve more difficult problems, act on that consultative support. Um, so I think as much as you can tap into technology to scale, the better. A second aspect here I would say is personalization. So you know, you might not be able to ever compete with an Amazon if you're a small retailer um, or the, you know, the, the Amazon of whatever industry you're in. Um, however, you can stand out from the competition by delivering these personalized support experiences by having empathy and humanity and building these relationships. So, you know, individuals really need to focus on personalizing um, their customer experience. You need to have technology that allows you to see all of that history and context, that behavior and context, no matter where they've interacted with you before, um, in order to, you know, bring to the table that human experience and not make a, a, a consumer feel like a transaction or a number. Um, the third, as we talked about, is measurement. So, you know, a lot of brands in the past have focused on efficiency metrics, like average handle time, average response time, which is completely valid. Um, and it often directly correlates to consumer happiness because they value speed and efficiency so much. However, as the full funnel consultative conversations become more normal, um, I will say that metrics like CSAT or NPS, customer effort score, things like that, can illuminate more accurately how your customer base feels about the support they receive beyond simply just, you know, speed of resolution. Um, so it'll be important to sort of broaden the scope of what you're measuring because um, a quick conversation doesn't always necessarily mean a successful conversation. Um, and the last point here just to highlight is that um, you should definitely prepare for the future. So we talked a lot about that demographic data um, there is sort of a new normal on the horizon that happened quite quickly over the last year. So ensuring that you're leveraging tools to prepare for this. Um, majority of younger consumers, as I said before, said that they will continue to shop online more often and they will require more of this consultative support. More than any other generation, Gen Z was spread so evenly across the buyer journey in terms of how they interact with customer service. So it'll be important to ensure that you have the tools and technology to give agents what they need in order to deliver on that, um, both digital first uh, channels and then also full funnel support. Um, Gabe is back finally. It looks like his internet is working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, hey, I just all of a sudden crashed out, but I wanted to see if anybody actually missed me and I'm not seeing anybody in any of the comments. <laughs> it didn't matter at all. So um, it looks like we were just wrapping up here. Um, do we have time for just a couple of questions? There was a couple that didn't get answered um, before we finish up, Andrea. Would that be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I liked this one, and I'm just jumping right back in here, you guys, but I like this one. Um, this came from uh, Mary here. She basically says, and I'm going to try to paraphrase, what role do you think other departments should really be involved in when it comes, what role do they play when it comes to customer service? Um, yeah. You're seeing it's, I think you said in the data, right? We're seeing a lot more in the pre-sales side of it. Oftentimes customer service has really just relied on that one group, the call center, the support group, et cetera, seems to be expanding. What role do you see other groups playing? Yeah, I mean, I think that customer service has an incredible 
incredibly invaluable role within an organization, especially in an online environment. If you think about like what happened over the last 15 months, customer service was almost solely the face of the brand. Um, metaphorically, like the boots on the ground when it comes to customer sentiment and customer feedback. So a lot of brands, even if, you know, other departments aren't necessarily like being brought into conversations, which is obviously a possibility if you have the right software, but ensuring that any information that a CX organization collects is shared with relevant parties um, throughout the organization, I think is super, super important. So, you know, maybe a product gets damaged more often in transit because it's packaged incorrectly, like sharing that with your logistics department to ensure that you're not losing money um, due to damaged products, or it could be that customers are having trouble navigating your website. So they reach out during the transaction process often, ensuring that information gets back to an e-commerce department or a marketing department to ensure that they're optimizing the website. Or, you know, maybe you're getting a lot of pre-purchase inquiries in a certain geographic that could um, maybe inform a new like brick and mortar store opening. There's just so much information that's collected via customer service conversations that I feel like if you're not gathering that information and sharing it with um, appropriate parts of the organization, you're sort of missing out on a large opportunity. Yeah, yeah, um, I think that's right. It does seem to be more holistic than it ever has before. This one comes from Michael and it's a little bit, um, a little bit different than the core. And I, there's two questions I want to hit that are a little off the, the, the core. You know, he mentioned he's kind of looking at, um, um, wanted to know a little bit more about customer and how we started at customer, how customer started, and also thinking about people who are really trying to advance their career in the CX space. I just want to touch on that for just a second. Um, and maybe Andrew, you could, you could add to it. You know, Michael, I, when it comes to customer, the whole company started based on this idea of um, when you look at the major players in the customer service space, there was a couple things lacking and it was touched on with some of this research. One was just this big omni channel. We've all experienced that where you're dealing with an airline, you're chatting with somebody, you can't get an answer, you pick up the phone, you call somebody and what happens? They had no idea you were chatting with an agent for the last 20 minutes. And so that would be one of the ways that we kind of started our beginnings and foundings. Um, that might be, you know, might be interesting to you. As you think about a career in, in CX, whether that's in software companies or otherwise, so many fast iterations coming because I think as Andrea shared in the data, consumers want something different. They want that, you know, we've always said like the phone is dead and the email's dead and consumers like, we don't care. We want to contact you wherever we are, whenever we are. Um, and so you're seeing rapid iteration and innovation in the CX space, whether it's the way we do NPS surveys, whether it's the omni-channel approach, you know, how do we tie that personalization, AI, right? The list goes on. Um, so I would encourage you, I just think it is um, exploding. Find an opportunity in one of these companies and maybe take a little bit of a hit, maybe take a position that's a little bit lower because I promise you they're growing and it's growing fast and the opportunity will 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 be there. So I, I love your idea and I would encourage you to pursue it because I think there's a lot of innovation, a lot of opportunity. Andrea, I know it's a little off top, but any quick comments on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that transitioning to the CX space, if you have, I mean, we're all consumers, right? We all have had great customer experiences. It. We've all had terrible customer experiences. And if you can really understand that and get to the bottom of that and understand the psychology behind it, um, I do think that it's a perfect fit. It obviously requires a lot of patience, especially in an agent role. Um, yeah. It's not always the most glamorous or, or, or um, easy job. It can be thankless at times, but you know, ensuring that you understand what the end consumer wants, that you have the technology in place to make your job as easy as possible, being an internal champion in order to ensure that the customer service team is being you know, is successful, but also being recognized. I feel like it yes. sometimes is one of the most important roles within an organization and may not be reflected. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, if, if you have the interest and the appetite and there's, it's changing so rapidly, it's not just this robotic, you know, uh, you're talking to a emotionless, like faceless person on the other side 
especially over the last 15 months as, as you know, customer service has become the face of the company in a digital world. Um, I think though, you know, those opinions are shifting and the skill set is shifting and um, there's a huge opportunity to, to make an impact in a business in a CX space. I agree. I agree. Uh, Bob, I think there was a couple of questions on your side. Do you want to throw those out? Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think are the most important customer service attributes to consumers right now? And I totally agree with you. The last 15 months, customer service has been, um, you know, just in the, in the spotlight and doing a great job, in my opinion. But what are the great, what are the most important customer service attributes that consumers value right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I can, I can absolutely take that one. So uh, I think that we did some research. I think I mentioned this earlier. We did some pandemic research um, surveying customer service organizations as to how the pandemic impacted them as well as consumers um, way back in May. Um, and, you know, the shift to digital doesn't necessarily reflect the shift to impersonal CX or like faceless CX, as I just said, customers still really want to be treated like human beings with unique thoughts, with their own preferences, not like a transaction number. Um, so the three things that we saw um, based on that research were um, number one was empathy, which makes a lot of sense with many people struggling over the last 15 months, frustrated emotionally and you know people are losing their job they really needed a customer service agent to treat them with empathy the second was personalization which i think goes hand in hand you're not um, transaction number 257 you're andrea paul who has shopped with this business for the last five years and i know that you prefer to communicate you know via email and um, I'm treating you like a friend and I know your name and I'm not treating you like um, an anonymous person. Um, and then the third was speed. And I think that will always be a priority. People avoid contacting customer service because it can oftentimes be a very time consuming process. Um, so the quicker you can get things answered while, while keeping that empathy and that personalization intact. I think that those are, are definitely the top three that we that we saw over the last year. Oh, I have nothing to add to that, Bob. She, <laughs> Bob, she, she took my thunder and lightning and she took it all. That's good. That's what happens when you go second. <laughs> no, no, no comment. Please the fifth. <laughs> Great. Hey, um, okay, so what's the easiest way to optimize a customer services uh, customer service agent's time? Yeah, I guess I can speak to this one. Um, I think from, from what I have seen um, and feedback that we've gotten in a lot of this research, there are a lot of organizations that have siloed third-party systems, right? So that means an abundance of wasted time. Um, agents have to navigate through a bunch of different places on different platforms, toggling between a ton of tabs in order to just service a single customer. Um, so I think if you can have a, a technology tool that can integrate all of your apps that you're already using, that can give all of the customer data, I can provide you with information, um, you know, product information or policy information in like a single screen. As much as you think it doesn't take that much time to switch between systems, like that quickly, quickly adds up. So, um, you know, integrating those applications can be somewhat complex. Um, it, a, an existence of an integration doesn't necessarily guarantee the integration will work for your business. So you need to find a system that you know can handle all of that inbound information and structure the data in a way that can display it in a coherent way and make it available for use to make it actionable right there in a in a single screen um so that's my opinion i feel like the toggling as, as simple as it sounds takes a ton of time out of in agent's day so just integration that's my one word answer integration great great hey i have one um, oh i'm sorry go ahead. I have one uh, one sort of final uh, question for you guys. Um, you've done this great research. We're in the midst of 
not only a pandemic, but it was a very, very scary time. And it's a seminal point in the history of the world. What do you think is going to happen? What are the takeaways moving forward? People just online shopping more than ever before. What, what do you see as the takeaway? The big one. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in for a minute. Maybe you can pile on. I mean, I think a lot of people have highlighted just the, you know, numbers like 10x, the digital revolution and what that's going to mean um, to the world in, in, in general. And so my big takeaway is, yeah, I think all, all demographics and all generations <clears throat> go digital. And what that means is that kind of then spreads through the economy you're seeing it with the remote work, right? I mean, that um, company, a lot of companies want to push people back. Most people are saying that's not going to happen it, full time. It's going to be a flex program. Well, what does that mean? I'm at home more. So what am I going to be doing? I'm probably going to be shopping, you know, digitally more. Um, so many people have gotten used to using tools. Um, I use my mother as an example of, you know, ways to kind of get people to help or different software solutions in, in, in that front. Um jobs have continued to go more digital, right? Companies that have a digital approach are winning. So um, I think there's so many trickle down effects for this digital revolution that we were forced to move 10 years in advance to where we were. And you, you can almost name it, you know, you're being affected in a digital way in that aspect. And so I don't see that changing. I see it just picking up. Andrew, what would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, I would echo everything you said. And additionally, just like the this digital transformation, I feel like a lot of organizations put a band-aid on things because they had to shift so quickly, but I don't think that it's going to go back to fully normal, maybe ever. Um, there's a lot of remote work happening. There's a lot of need for oversight and collaboration when everyone's not necessarily in the same space. So ensuring that you have, you know, cloud-based technology that um, ensures everything is normal if everyone can't be shoulder to shoulder. Um, I think that's also going to be super important just from an, an uh, agent and customer service organization perspective. Great. Hey, thanks so much, guys. Uh, looks like we're at the top of the hour, so we're out of time. But before we leave, I just want to thank everyone that joined us today, everyone that asked questions. I love the format, uh, Gabe and Andrea. This was uh, very interactive um, and, and fun. So, um, I'd like to thank Customer also for supporting us, without which this couldn't happen. And also our speakers for today, um, Gabe Larson, VP of Marketing for Customer, and Andrea Paul, Director of Research for Customer. Uh, we also have a winner of our $50 Amazon gift card. Uh, Eric Chan, you're the winner. Don't worry, we will uh, contact you and figure out how to get you the card by email. Um, for everyone else, if you'd like to review this event or send it to a colleague, don't worry, you'll get an email from us uh, with, once the archive is posted. We're also going to have uh, lots of information on Destination CRM as well um, covering this, uh, this session. And just want to remind everybody in a half an hour, we've got another session, uh, National Retailer the sex frictionless experiences with AI powered virtual agents. And that's at 1230 Eastern. Uh, but thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Gabe. And unfortunately, you guys are going to get cut off when we close the <laughs> event. So uh, we'll talk later via email. Thank Great. you. Great. Bye, everyone. Thank you.